played that one game that you thought was amazing and one of the best things ever, then you sort of, you know, you play it, you love it, you enjoy it, you take a step back to let the whole experience sink in, and then, well, you start to realize that maybe it doesn't have the lasting appeal that you thought it would. And that's sort of the case here with Batman Arkham Asylum. Now, I picked this up at the midnight launch, which is something I very rarely do. I don't get very excited for video games coming out, but this one actually had me amped up. I picked it up, brought it home, played it, and I loved it from start to finish. I mean, the storyline was simple enough to follow, touched on a lot of aspects of Batman's character. It was great. The art, the art design, the atmosphere of Arkham Asylum, everything was great in that department. The voice acting was great. It featured the talents of the true voices of Batman and the Joker, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. And you really can't ask for anything more than that. I thought the music was good. Batman's mastery of martial arts is depicted in the free flow combat, which is quite simple, but oddly enough, very rewarding at the same time and one of Batman's main trademarks, his ninja abilities to hide in the shadows and pick off people at will, is depicted very well in this game in the Invisible Predator gameplay, in which Batman hides from armed thugs, and as he takes them out silently one by one, they become increasingly more nervous about Batman. And the Joker, who now runs Arkham Island, will constantly say things over the intercom to sort of shake them up, which only adds to their paranoia, and these scenes were just so fun that I almost never got tired of them. In fact, the only real complaint I had was the detective mode. And I don't even think it qualified as detective mode. It should have been called God mode, or maybe God vision, depending on which term you like better. It's kind of like x-ray vision, where you look through walls. It points out all key areas of interest, where you can set bombs, where you can grapple up isolates which enemies are armed and which enemies are not, that kind of thing. On a gameplay level, it's okay, but it does make things a bit too easy. But the bigger problem I had with it is the fact that it doesn't really feel like Batman's using his detective skills. It feels more like he's just looking through a pair of goggles on a cowl. It never really feels like you're being a detective. It's so like you're just using the detective vision to follow traces of something in the atmosphere which will lead you to an objective point that you need to get to to continue the story. That's all it really feels like. It's not really being used to its full potential. Another problem with this is one that I've heard from several other people, so I know it's not just me. The detective mode makes things so easy that there's very little incentive to ever turn it off except in fights, and if you do that, it would basically mean that you're going to miss out on the awesome level design and all the atmosphere of Arkham Island. The only time that you might want to turn it off, you know, from a practical point of view, would be on a second playthrough when you already know where everything's at. But that kind of leads into my next problem, which is the biggest one I had. And that's, once I finished this game one time, I had absolutely no problem taking it to the store and trading it back in. I couldn't figure out why I felt this way, but then I realized that there's nothing really compelling me to want to play this again. I enjoyed every second of it the first time, but there is no New Game Plus, which means you're going to have to start over again from the beginning in terms of reacquiring all my gadgets and upgrades, which is never really fun. And secondly, there's nothing in the way of true unlockable content that's worth the time you're going to spend getting it. Yes, there are 240 Riddler trophies scattered around Arkham Island, and when you collect them, you do unlock things such as 3D character models, character biographies, and patient interviews. And they're very neat, I will not lie. Some of this stuff was kind of cool, and it's little details like this that I like, but there should have been something that directly contributed to the gameplay, and there wasn't. The only real thing you get upon finishing the game the first time is the armored bat suit, which sadly is only used in challenge mode, not the main game, which sort of defeats the purpose of even putting it in the game at all. Now, this is unquestionably, in my opinion, the best Batman game that's ever been made. And it probably comes as close to making you feel like Batman that a video game ever will. And as far as single play experiences go, 
This was pretty darn good, but sadly that's all it's going to be for me, because there's just not much here to entice me to want to play again. Going back to a really old superhero game on the PlayStation 1, the original Spider-Man game. Now, Batman Arkham Asylum has this game beat in pretty much every category, but Spider-Man 1 kept me playing long after I finished the main story just by the unlockable costumes and all the extra powers you got, and it was fun to go back through there and experiment and try new things. And Batman Arkham Asylum just doesn't have that kind of, you know, replay value. Once you finish it once, that's pretty much it. Now, the video games I buy usually fall into one of three categories. It's either a keeper, it's either a beat it and trade it in, or it's a burn it. And this game falls sadly into the beat it and trade it in category because it was fantastic while it lasted, but I just can't think of any reasons why I want to play this game again.